Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. This video is being premiered on BitChute, Rumble, and Brighton. Hopefully, more people will subscribe there so that they can get access to perhaps some things that I will be releasing there first. There are playlists on Brighton and on YouTube. And so if you found these videos on the alternate channels, BitChute, Brighton, and Rumble, you're welcome to also go to YouTube and subscribe to the Master's Voice Prophecy blog there. There is a website for each and every single prophecy that are on all four channels. It is www.the-masters-voice.com. Each and every single video is already meticulously laid out in a written prophecy. I strongly recommend people go and read these written messages. They contain many scriptures. They contain many admonitions from the Lord, many teachings, and basically things that will tighten holes in your faith, especially people who have never heard certain qualities of things. So these are end times prophecies and whether you're new to them or not, it must be understood that the end times are not generally a time that is going to be proclaiming victory and exciting prophecies and things that make the flesh feel good. So if you're looking for those kinds of things, you're not going to be able to find that content here in any form. The things that I am talking about are end times things. They are prophetic things, things that predate my presence here on the internet things that are written in the Bible and shall certainly come to pass. Today's message is called Satan as an Angel of Light, December the 8th, 2021. So that is nearly a year that I've had this message on the blog. And the banner scripture is this, if those days had not been cut short, nobody would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Matthew 24 and verse 22. And basically, this is just Jesus giving a kind of overview to his disciples of the times. Jesus is telling them at this point where he's saying that if the days were not cut short, nobody would be saved. Jesus has been speaking of quite a few things that if you read Matthew 24, it definitely is a chapter that is like a woman giving birth. It contracts and it doesn't let go. It is a chapter that is basically taking you deeper and deeper into the birth experience with more and more pain and struggle until it finally culminates with our Lord calling for his elect in verse 31. However, I always point out to people that it is a long journey from Matthew chapter 24 and verse 5 to verse 31. And so on this day, the Lord gave me this prophecy, not in a dream or a vision. It was a warning that he spoke to me and I will read it out. And I'm also going to integrate another prophecy that I received on October the 26th, 2022. This came in a prayer call. So it, it is relevant to what I will present here. And I will condense these two into one video. And so this is what the Lord said. The times that were before will be again. Plagues and pestilences of the ancient world will rise again. Terrible diseases will afflict mankind on account of their sin. Because they are so abominable in their practices, the very worst diseases that ancient people once struggled against will come again. And these are including but not limited to the fever, the ague, the plague, the black death, smallpox, and also genetic birth defects that are reminiscent of the Nephilim. All this will arise in the human population of the end days. Man will be afflicted in his skin by terrible boils and with skin diseases that have not been seen before. Sicknesses will also come from the chemicals and the pesticides that are used in the food and water, and there will be no escaping these things unless for my mercy shown to those who will call upon me. So whenever the Lord brings forth these proclamations, the first thing that we as the listener need to understand is that 
nothing is new. There's this constant response, like each prophecy is something that's brand new. It is created by a celestial or it's a new thing. And yet those who are familiar with the word of God knows that these are actually the outworking of very old and ancient things. The pale horse in the Bible has been there for centuries. This is Revelation chapter six and eight, where it just says that, and I beheld as it were a pale horse and hell with, and, and on him, the rider was death and hell was with him. And they were given power. I'm not sure if it's a third of the earth or a fourth of the earth to kill with pestilence. So pestilence is one of the methods that they will kill with. And I explained in many of the zombie prophecies, which unfortunately you will not be able to find on, um, YouTube anymore. These are zombie prophecies that, that, um, explained more in detail where it will come from. It will basically arise from the population that has taken the harm that causes harm. But I explained in those zombie prophecies that just a moment, please, that the struggle for water will be one of the things that accelerates the outbreak of disease among human beings. I saw things in the coming future that were simply called pandemic sicknesses. That is what they were called, pandemic sicknesses. And they were highly virulent. And truly the people who caught them, they were treated, the only, the only way that I can put it is that the way they treated um, the character in that movie, Philadelphia, when he had HIV, when it was still a relatively new disease and nobody knew what it was and how it worked. The way that man was treated, the way people were like, whoa, don't even try to breathe near me. That is the way those people were treated in those days. In those dreams about reanime, I saw that people were desperate to keep working because they needed money. They needed to sustain themselves. They needed to sustain their families. And so they were caking on makeup over the obvious outbreaks of terrible pustules and other things that broke out on their skin, but you could still see it. And they were treated horribly. The government in those days was doing severely restrictive mandatory quarantines of those people. They were rounded up and they were put into sickness camps. And so obviously they had a lot of incentive to hide if they were sick or to even go on the run. And if you can imagine contagious diseases on the run among a population that doesn't know a sick person is on the run, then you can simply imagine the trajectory of disease or the pathway that the disease took to explode in no time at all. And so God is saying that just according to old times prophecy, because people will keep sinning right until the end, the diseases that come to afflict people will be on account of their sin. And something I covered uh, a few years ago was how people who are sexually immoral, God said that they will start to find little animals in their privates, male and female. He said the things that feed on dead people will now begin to feed on people who continue in sexual immorality. Doctors won't know what to do with that. I spoke uh, a long time ago. I will try to look for that prophecy. But I said that I saw some hard white bumps appearing on people and those bumps were very painful to the touch and the doctors were inspecting those bumps and they had no idea what exactly it is or it was and so there's an old prophecy it's called behold the pale horse and god said that three things from the ancient world were coming back the fever the ague and the plague so in those days medical care was extremely terrible and fevers easily killed women and children especially, but also men, scarlet fever, other things like that. They used to have a huge death toll until medical science advanced enough to be able to combat that. The ague is a type of old world disease that works almost like this thing called consumption. So it's a clammy whereby you're cold and yet you're burning up with fever. And then sometimes you're hot and you are sweating buckets and all your joints feel as if they have swollen up to the size of coconuts and you feel extremely terrible. And then the plague, as we know, and the black death, the Lord said that the black death 
being ancient is going to come back and there's going to be a great increase of rats. Uh, the prophecy was made. Again, I will have to look for it. Where God says that rats are going to increase and take over in a lot of countries, spreading disease and becoming unmanageable pests. And one of the cities that he said that will happen to is definitely New York City. I saw rats, not like we get here, which is baby cat size and sometimes young chipmunk size. I saw rats that were full grown cat size at that time. And here in New York City, in that vision God showed me, the rats were moving as a living blanket. So they were not trying to pretend and going one-on-one -on -one and two-on-two. -on -two. They were now in full force. They were moving as a living blanket of rats. And I saw that when they would do that, not a single person in this city would dare to try and cross when they were crossing. So I saw them crossing the road, big, big rats. And some rats, their backs were above the crowd, which means they were even bigger than normal. And not a single person was moving. The Black Death, I think, is spread by rats. The Lord says that smallpox will come back, and he said that genetic birth defects that are reminiscent of the Nephilim. What is this? You just go back to the prophecy I made a few days ago. It's called the future, future loss of the sea and wormwood. And in that prophecy, the Lord was talking about how the future will be, there will be a much lower birth rate. Um, and he says that part of that low birth rate is because people will be opting for willing sterilization. Some of the people getting sterilized are the fun and the party crowd. They don't want to give birth. Some of them are the cute and the beauty crowd. They don't want to ruin their figure. They're going to go with um, a surrogate. Sorry, it's a bit late here. They're going to go with a surrogate, but some people are going to be sterilized because the kind of things that will be being born, God said it will be very strange looking and deformed children, children who will be coming with extreme deformities, children who you will take one look, the doctor will take one look and know this is nothing in the spectrum of humanity. This is a mixed breed. This is definitely something else mixed with man. And people will start opting for sterilization to stop what is being born from being born. So that is going to start showing up in the population. God says that people will have terrible boils on their skin and they will begin to present with new skin diseases that the medical textbooks cannot prepare these new doctors for. And in those old messages, God said that many, the medical industry has become very commercialized. And also in many um, modern societies, people have overcome the old diseases, so they're not bothered by a lot of things. And basically the textbook printers realized there's no need to have three pages on this pox and this scarlet this and this black death. We don't see those things in the medical industry anymore. And so he said that they have reduced information on those diseases to very small paragraphs and given much more room over to modern afflictions. But the problem with that is he says, excuse me, please, that when these things explode back into modern life, it will be very hard to find a book and even harder to find a living doctor who has a clue what to do, what to boil, what poultice, what leaf, because pharmacia, modern medicine will be completely unprepared for this and people are going to lose their lives in droves. And he says that it is punishment on the unrighteous and nobody will be able to escape these things except God shows them mercy. So I have seen in the end times that a lot of Christians, righteous though they are, loving God though they are, they did lose their lives because these are some of the casualties that go hand in hand with biblical prophecy. And this is why it must be understood that you are not coming to this channel to hear future highlights from celestial. You are coming to this channel because prophecy turns a man back to God. Prophecy widens a man's eyes to understand about the personal sin that we are all having and the need to turn back to a savior. If you do not need a savior, then you possibly are a fallen angel, a Nephilim, because all men need the salvation that Jesus Christ offers. Hearing these things, the natural response of anyone with wisdom is that I need to get back with my God. 
I need to go back to this relationship that my grandmother brought me into when I was three, but I've been neglecting it for the party life out there. I've been neglecting it because I made a ton of money and who needs God when I'm the hot thing on Wall Street? Whatever the posture of the heart, when you hear these messages, it's not to catapult you into freaking out in fear. It's to bring a very sober estimation of your current spiritual life. And if you are honest and your stance with Jesus is poor, the first thing you need to do is to go back to God in repentance, asking for mercy, confessing your sins unto him with the help of the Holy Spirit, confessing your faith in Christ as Lord so that you can be brought into sonship with him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. After that, you are in the running, whether he will keep you alive until the last day or whether you will exit this life, you are in the running to still end up at the glorious wedding supper of the Lamb. And so the Lord says that plague will come and pestilence, pestilence is going to rage on this earth like a fire. And I've been speaking of how I saw that from the time that we went through in 2020 going forward, these things are going to come in rolling waves, successive waves. And the Lord showed me in this prophecy that is called, I think it is called Behold a Pale Horse Part 2. I will definitely link that one because it is important to see how in that prophecy, God revealed that these are man-made pestilences. Some of them man-made diseases. The black death won't just wake up and solely come from the rats and smallpox won't just jump up out of the past and out of history and come. These are man-made things. This is malevolence. This is malintent, nothing but wickedness at work. The Lord called it man's inhumanity to man that is going to wake up and start exterminating people on purpose to reduce the population. God has been speaking about population reduction since April, 2020 in warnings about the harm that causes harm. And mankind was not listening because they were listening to the experts that were saying, we'll get through this together, America. And so on the 26th of October, 2022, I was on my usual prayer call and I was praying. And what I do is I'm praying and I'm speaking, and if the Lord will say something, it just comes out with or without me, in fact, without me having any previous knowledge that it will come out. And I will just read for you here from my laptop. And I was saying the following, and as I was seeing images, and I said, Lord, we need you at this time. Please help us. Please keep our body strong, Lord, for the sake of these plagues that are coming. For I began to indeed see that new plagues are on the way to us. I said, it will soon be horrible again, Lord, when the plague revisits us. This thing that I see now is burning up people before me on the hospital gurneys. It is cooking them, Lord. Keep us safe from it. They are back with another plague, and it is much worse than the first, Lord. This is worse than CV19. They are back, Lord, to terrorize us, to terrify us. They have come again with another plague, a plague of great burning, of great heat, that makes men helpless, that takes people away much faster than before. Help us, Lord, with this fever and preserve your righteous out of the mouth of the plague. And I began to see that the hospitals in America were indeed filling up so rapidly. And this time I have to tell you the fear was re real. It was real. Uh, it, there was fear. Last time there was consternation. There was worry. There were questions. But I'm telling you, this thing this fear, the, it went bone deep because of how fast this fever that I saw was eating up people. I saw a man in a bed and his monitor, whatever that monitor beeping thing is, it said that his, his fever was 109. And this is the exact fever I was speaking about um, round about the midpoint of the year in 2020 when the Lord showed me that something that was simply represented by the fire symbol, you know, the, the symbol for fire, like a little a little small flame, like the flame emoji. He showed me that that would be coming after that first 
CV-19. And so I'm not interested in scaring anyone, but I'm telling you that thing that I saw, it was so contagious that when people passed away, they were either flushed red or flushed purple because they had been cooked in their skin. And I've spoken of it before saying that their skin was as dry and flaky as pastry. A 30 something year old person could pass away and be looking 89 years or or even older on the gurney because they had been shriveled and wizened by this thing. It was extremely contagious. And those who were taking away the bodies, I saw that they had to wear that suit because if you zipped up the thing and a little bit of a person's hair got out and was on an unsecured person, even from the hair, the keratin in the hair or stuff like that, you could get it. And so I was looking at the overflowing medical centers People were running ridiculously high fevers. They were being dried out and they were passing away extremely quickly. And I was saying, as I was just speaking out the Lord's words, I said, Lord, this is like Ebola, but it's not it. This thing appeareth as Ebola. It is acting like Ebola, but it is not it. And I did not see any bleeding. I did not see hemorrhaging like that. People were just cooking in their organs, their vitals were just cooking in this extreme heat. And I was seeing the little twisty symbol that looks like this thing, but it was not this thing. It was very far off in the distance. And I could see this disease represented sitting against a red backdrop, but it was not what is it was appearing to be. And that is just something, there is no need to actually write this as a separate prophecy on the blog. That is just something to bring out because it fits here. God says that old plagues like the Black Death and ancient sickness and old pestilence will manifest in modern times as a judgment upon this sinful world and the spirit of death. This is Revelation 6 and 8. The pale horse with death on it as the rider the spirit of death will cover the world as an affliction against people who especially curse and deny the Lord. The next part of this prophecy is definitely talking about the return of sky gods. These will be people like the Anunnaki, but also especially the ones that call themselves aliens. The Lord said the gods are coming back to this earth. They will come down from the sky in majestic fashion in front of everyone making the grandest possible entrance that they can. But beware, for Satan is a deceiver. Please remember this prophecy is called Satan as an angel of light. Satan is a deceiver. The Lord said these gods, quote fingers, will use dazzling lights and flashing lights, for they are beings of light and they can appear as pure light in some cases. Now, remember I said in that prophecy, um, the one with the shattered sky. What is the name of that message? It is called the silver mist. The prophecy where I said that I saw the sky crack straight from the back to the front. It cracked in a straight line all the way forward into the horizon and it began to tear apart. And as it opened an ancient evil that has no body, it was silver and it looks like mist, but it also looks like liquid flowing mercury, like that thing from the Terminator began to flow out through the crack and make fingers like this. And that thing ate so many souls. It ate so many souls when it came into the earth that it went from silver, sparkly-ish silver to black. And I will just say that this was the same thing I saw coming into the world on that one hour prayer call that is available to you that makes mention of terrible darkness that will come to this earth and that will last for a period of time. And the Lord said that there will be living creatures in that darkness as a punishment to the world for the world is sinful. These creatures are sinful. And God said that those things have been here forever. Here in America, we make lots of movies. We make lots of um, documentaries and we say, we don't know everything. And there's things out there. Well, of course there are things out there. Those things were on this earth before the Lord created us in the safety of Eden. And that's where we were meant to stay. But being cast out, we have come out into the greater unknown. And these hairy things are living out in the fields in the high hills, in the mountains. They are living at the very depths of the sea. They are there with their fish tails. They are there with their 17 arms. They are there with their huge sea serpent that is the length of half the sea from the bottom until the middle. 
They are there and we are here and we are smaller and those creatures are fallen and we also are fallen. And so it will be the battle and the joining of the fallen. This is what it means when it says iron mingling with clay. That evil kingdom that is raising up with man, with transhumanism, with being a cyborg, like Elon Musk says, with transcending and lifting your consciousness to the cloud and accepting hybrids and drinking potions and becoming 22 years old again for a moment, those things are going to directly clash with a mankind that doesn't want a God. Evil will be here exterminating evil, but as iron cannot cleave to clay, that iron is going to rise and strike this clay as part of the clay's judgment. That's why the fallen angels are only chained for a time. They will get their moment and come out of those holes wherever they are. No chains will be on them. Wormwood is going to fall into the water and decimate the population. These things that are under the volcanoes that I spoke about, that I have seen, huge, with perfect muscle tone, completely naked, bald, smashing chains inside volcanoes. They are inside these volcanoes, chained up. They are not bothered by the heat. They are bothered by being chained up, and they will not be chained up forever. There is going to be amalgam of these unclean things, even with women. I have said this, that the females of this world are going to get tired with sleeping with all the men that they sleep with and will branch out into strange flesh. The males also. God has said that the womb of the end time women will be the incubator to bring forth the new Nephilim. This is why the children will be born looking strange and confounding the doctors. Nothing happens unless it is part of the chain of events. That is being presented here, hopefully in a clear style that anyone can follow. If they only take the time to watch the videos, ask less questions, make an investment in your own spiritual future. This is not a time for spoon feeding. God bless you. And so God says Satan is a deceiver and these creatures, these aliens are coming with dazzling light, flashing lights. They are also light beings. What does that mean? Some of these creatures do not need a physical body. They can simply light up a room and tell you, I am Gabriel who came to Mary, and it's a lie. They don't need to have physical form. They can transcend that and appear as pure light and start telling you things like, before the I am was the I am, I am. And then you'll be thinking, that's what God said. No, that's not what God said. It is a trickery of what God said. And many people will be taken by these things because there is no helmet of salvation on their head. Almost every piece of the armor, when you think about it, it goes back to the word of God. The helmet that keeps you saved is the word who himself is Christ Jesus manifest in written form. No helmet, anything people tell you on YouTube will sound good to you. Anything sounds scriptural to people. America is the nation that produced Dan Brown, who told people that Jesus had girlfriends and got married and had children. And this man enjoyed enormous success from a huge bunch of people that if you gave them a form at the doctor and told them to check their religion, they would check Christian. And yet they followed these Gnostic fantasies. Why? Because Christianity by itself is boring to most people and they are always looking for a much more intriguing storyline to follow to their own destruction. God says that the devil can appear and is an angel of light and they will come in dazzling formation and they will also be very helpful to people. Please understand, Alexa and Siri are only the beginning of a lifestyle. Alexa and Siri are indicative of a future that God says will make us very arrogant. God says in a world where you need something and you have to pray to him and ask him for it, you develop fruits of endurance. You develop fruits of humility because you will be humbled sometimes by God telling you no. You develop fruits of 
patience as you wait for the answer. You develop the fruit of self-control as you understand that God has the right to give you what he will give you at the time he will give it to you and not at the time you insist that you need it. And if he doesn't give it to you, then he is a God who is not good. But in a world where drones can bring your Amazon packages to you, and in a world where if you feel that you're looking too old, you can simply order something and drink it and go back to the time that you were 16, but with a 25 or 45 year old woman's maturity, God says that people will become extremely short tempered, arrogant, and very sinful because the new world that is coming, its tagline, if I had to choose one word aside from deception for the future world, that tagline would be convenience, everything at your fingertips, whatever you want, you can have. Anything you can conceive of, I'm going to get to those prophecies, anything you can conceive of. There will be a supplier of it. It will have a price tag. If you have the money to get it, it's yours. In a world like that, who needs God? Satan will deliver much faster and with free shipping. So they will come to deceive, being very helpful. These people will bring technology if they can be called people, they will be very helpful to people, bringing technology, bringing improvements, bringing everything that will transform our world before our eyes. From the building materials, they will change it. The medical system, they will change it. Doing away with money, they will change it all. But God says this is all a deception and a long running plan. For the minute they bond with man, just as iron cleaves not to clay, they cannot cleave to humanity, and instead man will be greatly destroyed by them. And I saw three fingers, these three alien fingers, grasping the hand of humanity in friendship. So these three fingers were here, and the human hand was grasping them in a covenant, and it was an agreement. And the Lord said that there will be a treaty signed between these alien creatures and ourselves. And on the day that that treaty is signed publicly, people will rejoice. We're sitting here in 2022, and maybe the viewers of this channel are swearing in their hearts. There will be no rejoicing, not from me, but if you've been listening to what I've been saying in these prophecies, the primary thing that will make the end times successfully fit the description of society in the Bible is deception. The Bible speaks often of deception. Deception goes hand in hand with the end times. You can't have the end times without the majority of man living, being deceived. And so rest assured that by whatever means, whether it's propaganda, whether it's by telling people, don't you want to get the cancer healed? And then the cancer is actually healed. Who would turn away from such things? Majority of people will rejoice. Majority of people will see this. The Lord said, as a great season of advancement, everything that these creatures are suggesting so that they can come closer and live in fellowship and oneness with us. People will say collaboration is good. Diversity is good. America, this is why you are obsessed with diversity. This is the reason that there's certain talking points that come from the powers that be. It's to condition you for the time where it's not diversity with black, diversity with Asian, diversity with trans. It will be diversity with what is not of this earth. It is always heading to push the fences a little bit further until the fences can be knocked down altogether and anything goes there is the voice of the announcer I heard as the agreement was signed. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great step forward. It's a historic day for humanity. This news announcer was speaking so confidently, but what he didn't know is that he was announcing the last call for mankind. Funeral roll, the death call for human beings. And the Lord was saying, by the gods, O man, because you hated me and you hated my trust, my truth. By the gods, you shall be destroyed. And so I was seeing how UFOs can cloak themselves if they want. They can hide right up there in the cloud cover and they can formulate cloud. They can come interdimensionally. These things are able to be in this realm where your eye can see them. And then suddenly they look like they've disappeared. It's either because of cloaking technology or because they literally are able to move back. 
between the dimensions to where the eye cannot see them. Now, I explained about dimensions. I will do it again. Dimensions is where I'm sitting here. And I have a wall. And then I have a neighbor here and a neighbor here. And so you can sometimes hear a sound that because I'm sitting here, I am not making those sounds. If my neighbor is vacuuming or doing other things, those sounds are indicative that there is life in this same world, in this same street, in this same um, building, but outside from my eyes. There is life just on the other side of this wall. I can't say, oh no, that's outer space. They do not come from outer space. They are interdimensional creatures. They move our, in our tangible dimension here where we live and walk and eat. And then they move just to another one outside of sight, not in any far dimension, just outside of our tangible seeing and hearing senses. But they are right there. And this is why they are suddenly able to materialize we use that word materialize. It means come out of nowhere and then just as suddenly move away. This is what the Lord was saying that may, we are so arrogant that when it comes to these UFOs and these creatures, people always are so hard hearted and say, oh, it's a lie. If anyone had seen them, why is it always a fuzzy video? Why is it never a, a 4k video? We have great cell phones. Now we have Apple. We can capture anything in HD. And the Lord will just say to me, my child, look, at the arrogance that will kill your fellow man. For they do not know that these spiritual creatures, these beings are not like us. Yes, we have a spirit, but that spirit is contained in us. And that spirit is of Christ, unless we have become corrupted. These beings actually emanate out their own thing. What makes anyone think that you can hold up a dimensional phone from here, this world, and record something that is able to move out of your visible limited presence and get a good picture. I'll continue with the prophecy. God says that they shield themselves effortlessly, hiding in the cloud, cre clouds, creating clouds around themselves to shield themselves from view. And I found a picture. Hopefully you can see it. There is one sitting right there over somebody's house. right there in the sky. And then they will come and tell you, oh, that's a circular lefto cloud. It's not anything. And when they want to be seen, God says they will appear with flashing lights and fanfare. When they want to be noticed, they will hang right in the sky. As I said in my 2020 dream, that they were hanging in the sky like flat silver plates day and night. No more need to hide. They had already done their big reveal. No more need to pretend. They sat there in the sky week after week, month after month, destroying this atmosphere, making the sky to be red all the time, light red in the daytime, dark red at night. Nothing could grow on this earth except maybe this stubborn GMO corn because, you know, Monsanto just won't quit. It was horrible. The soil would just not make anything. I have no idea what we were eating at that time. A very frustrating time. And when the U.S. government tried to do something about it, like wake up and say, well, you know, we're going to get them. They vaporized those jets. When I say vaporized, I mean that those dull things, they were like this with a bump in the middle and a bump at the bottom. The ones that I saw like flat dinner plates. And when the jets were coming, they began to glow up. They began to get brighter and brighter and brighter silver. And then sew, beams came out of them and they hit those young pilots who let America sacrifice them. And not a single piece of jet fell to the ground. Not one piece. They were vaporized. One minute jet with a young man, the next minute, absolutely nothing. They broke them down to molecular pieces. And that's how those young pilots died. So when they show up and they want to be seen, you can expect something like this. Dazzling light shows. And I have to say, Satan is crafty. He waited for the right generation, a generation that can't do anything without a cell phone in its hand. It has to be outside recording. And those are the perfect people to do this kind of deception in front of. Get them outside in the millions and then just let those beams ripped. God said that people will be happy to see these creatures. Said they will feel so vindicated. They will be like, we knew it. We knew it. And the truth is 
They're right. They did know it. God says they will feel vindicated that they always kept the faith about believing that aliens are real and that this government lies. And look, here they are. They're real. They're right in front of us. Here's the proof. But God says, imagine the depth of trickery it takes to make people lust after something that will destroy them. All you have to do is keep it from them. You see? You just have to keep the information from them long enough until they become convinced that it's there. And then one day you suddenly let it loose and they see that it's there. And then the next day, a great mass of people are being taken away. God said it will be a global frenzy on this earth when these creatures come out. Every emotion under the sun, joy, anxiety, hope, worship, fear, loathing, celebration, giddiness, confusion, you name it. It will be there, but he said that the wise should stay far away from these creatures. He said that millions will be curious about them. Very typical, especially here. People will want to try and get as close as they can because they have so many questions. And I've certainly seen that. I will come and say that ain't, um, mermaids are dangerous and then people will say, well, we will witness to them. I will come and say that hybrids are foul. They are Nephilim. And then people are saying, but do you think they knew that they're evil? Do you think that they know that they have a choice? These people, two or three steps away from a snare and destruction, the Lord says that the appearance of the fallen angels, aliens, and other mythical beings will be a turning point in human history. But whatever agreement they sign, whatever humanity is going to come to an agreement with them, it is civil, meaning it will be courteous only for a moment. The end of it all is death. Too much death. I am tired of seeing people die for what I can only politely call stupidity. I have seen it for years and years and years, and I have been sitting here warning that the ultimate cost of loving Satan and loving the things of Satan is not a second chance. A Nephilim will not give you a moment to cry out to God. Those things are lightning quick. If you make an error and come into contact with them because you allow pride, you allowed your research interest, your curiosity, your anthropology degree, whatever it is, if you allow it to bring you close enough until you are within striking distance of Satan, don't be surprised when the serpent does what he does, which is go for the face and sting and sting and sting. So... The Lord says we should keep in mind how Satan is described in the world. In the word, a roaring lion that is looking for unguarded flesh to kill. A skillful and deceiving hunter. An adversary, he is called. An enemy and his famous title, the great dragon. He has deserved all of these names. And God says that the devil is capable of deceiving people so well that the Bible says even the elect are at risk. That means even those listening who says, I will never. The level of deception, this spiritual madness that is already affecting the minds of people, it will get to the point where if, if possible, even the elect will be deceived. And so the Black Death, bubonic plague, the resurgence of disease, the pale horse, fevers, ague, skin diseases, sexual immoral diseases, worse things, boils on the skin, things that are hard to diagnose, things that confuse this current crop of doctors who haven't studied much and who don't know anything about the old world as well as the coming of false gods. May we seek our Father with humility. May we actually have peace in knowing that the entire Bible is not prophecy. You have a whole Bible at your fingertips, a ton of Psalms that speak comfort, a ton of Psalms that is waiting to become ready armor upon you to get you ready if you would only turn to it and seek the comfort that it gives. And so we are going to the world of Noah, Thank you for being with me. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice. The title of this prophecy from December 2021 is Satan as an Angel of Light. 
We bless the Lord God who has given his counsel. We bless the Lord God who has revealed the end from the beginning. We bless the Lord for the spirit of prophecy, Jesus Christ himself speaking into the earth, reminding people that he is not a dead God. He is real. He sees ahead and he sends now warning and caution so that those who have ears to hear can hear. This is Celestia with the master's voice. God bless you. Thank you to those who support this ministry. Everything about the ministry you can find in the description box. And um, until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.